Hello, you're welcome to Discuss with Ibrahim Fatoyimbo. <laughs> This episode of Discuss with Ibrahim Fatoimbo, we are going to be discussing the concept of human communication. We all communicate as human beings. And as a communication student, it's very expedient for you to understand what it takes to communicate, understand the process of communication. So, what is communication? Communication is the process of disseminating information through a channel to a destination and you get this feedback from it that is the process of communication so for the examination because of time i'll be giving you some tips and how the question we go you know we go and what you expected to do so the first one is this when you see a question like which of the following is not an element of communication you must understand all the elements of communication the encoder the decoder, the channel, the message. So anything that is outside of that, meaning that that is not. So when they say something is not, you must look at every other thing is, all right? But there is one particular one that is not a part of the process. Let's look at another thing talking about the study of how human individuals interact through verbal and non-verbal messages is known as what? Number one, interpersonal communication, mass communication, group communication, interpersonal, intrapersonal communication. And there's a difference between intra and interpersonal communication. Intra is when you are speaking, it is more of within. But inter is one or two person conversing. So for certain is interpersonal communication, like international. That means it involves one or two persons. Another area, which is you must study the concept of communication and understand the process of communication don't forget when we talk about the process of communication another very important thing is the noise the term noise is term the the term noise in communication refers to dash something like that you should know that it is what distorts message because for every noise we have the psychological noise physiological noise physical noise physical noise can be maybe a vehicle as we are recording here that is making noise or the sound of generator or the sound of fan or maybe the air conditioner is distorting the message if you have the psychological one we talk about what is more of maybe somebody is depressed it's more of internal right so you must understand the definition and what noise is all about another area you need to pay attention to is the functions of communication what are the functions of communication what is communication used for you must understand you should also learn types of communication the interpersonal communication intrapersonal communication group communication mass communication you must know their differences so when you stumble on questions like that you should know how you arrest them look at this which of the following is an example of a context that influences communication what influences communication look at these options number one cultural norms physical environment relationship between communicator all of the above listen again which of the following is an example of a context that influences communication so there are certain things that influences communication number one cultural norms my culture i'm a yoruba boy you are nigo the way we communicate will be different so our culture can distort and influence the communication process or the understanding can influence physical environment is an example of noise to what you should watch out for and relationship between communicators most times i could recall once upon a time while we do a student union we went on protest and we were invited to talk to the governor to you know to tell the governor what we need and meeting the governor for the first time there's what we call you know the the statue of a governor like i want to talk to the governor you can be scared so with that it can influence the way you talk or you relate with somebody who is older than you also learn the communication process again the encoding decoding feedback you must learn those things 
look at this particular example i like to give again so you know that everything about noise should be paid attention to which barrier to effective communication arises from different background or context which barrier to effective communication arises from different backgrounds or context number one physical barriers language barriers cultural barriers psychological barriers that brings about differences from our background what is my background it is my cultural exposure my cultural experience so what you should be aiming at such question is the cultural background so different background let me give you an example say which barrier to effective communication arises from different backgrounds or context context is always talking about settings right we say context affects meaning when you see your friend there are friends that i always give you an example that when you want to see a little ah uh, really alpha they won't take offense with it because that is the way you have been relating right so that works like that another thing is that you must also pay attention to listening everything about listening active listening look at this particular question i would like to ask active listening involves dash paraphrasing the speaker asking clarifying questions providing non-verbal feedback all of the above you must always be very careful when you see question with all of the above or none of the above you can only be able to separate them if you know the meaning of that now to this particular question active listening involves number one paraphrasing the speaker the speaker yes it's active listening when i say something i say oh sorry sir did you mean this that means you are paraphrasing you want clarity on what i have said do you get so furthermore when you see that you hear another thing say asking clarifying question is the same thing as paraphrasing paraphrase do you get so when you say clarifying is that you will be clear you don't just don't assume that i thought you said this one no you don't think you should as a journalist to say ah mr governor are you saying that they are going to increase the salary oh i didn't mean like that i meant like that that is that means you are listening actively another one is providing non-verbal feedback providing non-verbal feedback is another thing so providing non-verbal feedback is also active listening non-verbal feedback here i use it, providing it verbal a, a non-verbal feedback so when they say a non-verbal feedback is when you nod you know when you say something to certain people you say hmm they are paying attention you will even be hasty to tell them more do you understand sometimes some people you know you do that in class even if you don't want the lecturer you clap for them and the lecturer too will be like oh you are actively listening all right so it's an example so for this kind of question it is all of the above it is all of the above so look at the technicality look at active listening involves paraphrasing the speaker yes asking clarifying questions yes providing non-verbal feedback yes but if you see something like non-verbal feedback you'll be like ah, non-verbal feedback let me choose non-verbal feedback you are wrong do you get so another thing you need to pay at like i've mentioned the functions of communication the study of communication across different culture is known as intercultural communication the study of communication across different cultures is intercultural communication you must understand that which of the following is not an element of communication process not an element of communication process number one source message channel gatekeeper which of it oh i'm sure you are still thinking so the answer there is gatekeeper don't forget element of communication process the process of communication is the encoding the message the channel noise uh what's it called decoding feedback so all those things are the process so gatekeeping is not part of the process so such questions gatekeeping is the answer that it is not part of it another one the context in which communication take place include the following settings and psychological environment okay include the physical setting and psychological environment is referred to as dash a noise b feedback c setting d channel let me give that again the context in which communication takes place 
involving the physical setting and psychological environment is referred to as dash noise feedback setting channel now number one thing that will give you problem there is context you'll be thinking what is context and i have mentioned it earlier context is talking about setting so when i say context is about setting you see that i always tell you this english is your problem it's the major problem if you know grammar certain thing will not be your problem listen to this again i'm sure you will get it right now the context in which communication takes place including the physical setting and psychological environment is referred to as a noise no feedback no settings channel yes settings that is the correct answer settings so which of the following is an example of non-verbal communication which of the following is an example of non-verbal communication written text facial expression public speaking email which of it i will not say it go and find out okay i think that's enough for the process noise 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 okay let me check another random topic that i want you to pay attention to so those types of communication noise are very important and there are questions for true or false too that you should pay attention to the question like i say that true or false feedback is an essential is is a essential for effective two-way communication feedback is essential for two-way communication yes or yes 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 so facial expression let's not go let's the study of how people use message to generate meaning is the definition of number one rhetorics public speaking communication theory mass communication that's very very technical if you don't pay attention you are going to stumble when you see such question now listen the study of how people use messages to generate meaning is the definition of what they use messages to generate meaning the answer is not the answer is not rhetoric rhetoric is about persuasion public speaking speaking to a heterogeneous audience communication theory mass communication mass communication is defined as dissemination of information to an heterogeneous audience now the answer is communication theory so here i have warned you when you see questions for objective you must learn to use elimination method you must learn to use elimination method furthermore let's talk about which of the following is not one of the primary function of human communication one of the function of human communication number one expressing emotion sharing information influencing others performing complex calculation get it right which of the following is not is not pay attention to that don't just stumble on any question and you just rush read it carefully and understand before attempting right which of the following is not one of the primary functions of human communication expression of emotion is human communication sharing of information is what human communication influencing others is communication performing complex calculation are we doing mathematics in human communication so that is wrong that is the correct that is the one that is not part of the function that you must understand you must also pay attention to look at this that listening is another topic that you must pay attention to you must learn it and understand listening skill the study of how people use messages to generate meaning within and across various contexts is known as number one linguistic rhetorics i said it is persuasion semiotics communication study the answer is communication studies okay okay another aspect that you must learn is the model of communication model of communication which model of communication views it as a one-way process where both parties are equally involved is called Lillian model, transactional model, 
interactive model, circular model. Which model of communication views it as a two-way process? Two-way process where both parties are equally involved. Number one, linear model, transactional model, interactive model, circular model. The answer is interactive model. Interactive model, not transactional model. You can only differentiate if you learn all this model that I have mentioned. So when you see questions, you'll be able to differentiate them. Another thing here, because some of the topics we dealt with is self-disclosure. Read everything on this self-disclosure. There is a robust material that is a PDF that was sent. That is, you know, we, we emerge everything about the 100 level presentation together and it's going to be of benefit to you. So read self-disclosure. Look at this question. Dash is the process of passing on information about yourself to someone else, whether you intend to or not. Passing information about yourself, you intend not or not to. So look at number one, encoding. Encoding is not it. That means you are encoding message. Self-disclosure, interpersonal expression, personal disclosure. That's very dicey there. Get it? Let me give you that. Dash is the process of passing on information about yourself to someone else whether you intend to or not number one encoding self-disclosure interpersonal expression personal disclosure the answer is self-disclosure be very careful about and read on self-concepts too read on self-concepts it will help you not forgetting the onions theory not forgetting the onions theory i love that theory which is the main concept behind the onions theory of communication communication is simply is simple and direct communication is laid is laid or uh, laid yes and complex communication is linear and non-dimensional communication is static and unchanging so what's the answer the concepts of onion theory must be looked into communication is laid and complex that is it so when you understand what onion theory means there's no question they want to bring there that you'll be able to attend so you must read up on onion theory another thing about onion theory say which layer of the onion theory involves implicit meaning such as body language and tone which layer of the onion theory involve implicit meaning such as body language and tone number one core medium layer outer layer layer inner layer the answer is middle layer so read up on onion theory read on low self-esteem talk about esteem is very important you understand everything about esteem another thing is poor communication skill can lead to dash improved relationship greater self-confidence misunderstanding and conflict increase emotional awareness so when there is poor communication it leads to misunderstanding and conflict so pay attention to every details don't rush to choose any answer read and understand the questions right so furthermore the way we perceive ourselves in brackets self-concept is influenced by what only our own thought feedback from others media portrayal all of the above what is self-concept you must know what self-concept is all about right so self-concept is now talking about the way we perceive ourselves self-concept in bracket is influenced by what influences self-concept the way you see yourself the way you perceive yourself number one only your own thoughts can make you yes your thoughts you can feel like oh, i'm a fine boy i'm a beautiful girl it's your thought feedback from others so people can say hey, hey, or more tongue. okay it's going to make you have a self-concept about yourself like don't you know i'm a beautiful girl 
right so media portrayal the way the media portrays certain people shows that okay maybe they're a celebrity or not so the answer is all of the above all of the above all of the above and non-verbal communication such as body language and tone account for 10 percent of communication 25 percent of communication 55 percent of communication the answer is 93 percent of communication most communication is no what makes you understand communication is not only well i'm saying the body language the way i use my face facial expression gesticulation those are the things that makes communication understandable right so developing ld self-esteem so you read up on self-esteem you read up on self-esteem and there's another theory that i really want to okay self-disclosure is another thing that you need to pay attention to we have which barriers can interfere with effective communication physical barriers i think we've mentioned something like that according to this, yes another thing another theory we have three theories that you must read onions theory social extinct theory and I'll, I'll get the other one here too so the second theory here is according to a social exchange theory people weigh the cost of dash of social relation number one risk benefit power dynamic cultural factors yes i always say friendship is not by force it's by choice so social exchange theory is here talking to us that saying that according to social extension people weigh the cost of dash of social relationship what benefits that's the answer benefits what am i getting from this person All right it's what you watch out for in social exchange theory the uncertainty reduction theory is another thing the uncertainty reduction theory suggests that we communicate to dash to increase uncertainty about others decrease uncertainty about others either increase or decrease uncertainty the answer is decrease uncertainty about others let's talk about consistency theory how does consistency theory explain the process of attitude change i've mentioned three theory onions social exchange and the third one is consistency theory you must learn those theories and understand what they are saying so that you'll be able to face it and write any question that you have been asked for it so let's look at let me give you the scenario of this question it is question i said like how does consistency theory explain the process of attitude change through number one true reinforcement of existing attitude through direct persuasion from others through minimizing cognitive dissonance through exposure to new information this is a grammar i've always told you if you don't learn new words you will have problem so you must learn new words so the answer is true maximizing cognitive dissonance cognitive is more of something that is within right so in consistency theory which term describe the tendency to seek out information that align with existing belief number one selecting exposure confirming confirmation bias cognitive dissonance persuasion the answer is selective exposure we select what we want to expose to in mass communication we have persuasion theory and persuasion theory has what i call ear exposure here okay at exposure attention and retention all right when you are exposed to something you give it your attention and it stays in your subconscious right so models read about models linear models and all another understand the layer of onion theory what else do i want you to learn i think that's the basic information that will help you so just listen to these five questions and note them what terms refer to the unconscious assumption we make based on our cultural values and experience what terms refer to the unconscious assumption you are not conscious about it we make based on our cultural value and experience number one eye context two cultural stock three cultural biases four low context the answer is cultural biases you will see the example i always give you husband and wife got married 
one is an Igbo, the Yoruba, the boy is a Yoruba. Don't forget, your mom growing up, I'm sure some of you till now, if you don't finish your food, they will not allow you to eat the meat. Forget that you're in university. So they now got married. And when they got married, they served the food. And as a Yoruba boy, they always believe that if you are older than your siblings, you pick meat first and eat. So that is the mentality the guy was carrying. So when they got married, Igbo culture, they don't believe in such thing like maybe you just, everybody, you just eat. That's what we call Igbo culture, egalitarian system. So on this day, they just saw first time showing love and the wife just speak me. And the husband was furious, like, why will you take me before me? Don't you know I'm just, ah, sweetheart, there's enough meat here now. Why are you fighting? So now, the husband believes that because of his own culture, the, he, that's the best way. And it does not happen like that. And that's what I always tell you. Respect other people's opinion. Don't tell people shut up. We all look, but we see differently. Alright? So the point I'm making here is this. That cultural biases make us make unconscious decisions. Listen to that question again. What terms refers to the unconscious assumption we make based on our cultural values and experience? The answer is cultural biases. Which type of cultural context relies heavily on relies, I beg your pardon, relies heavily on nonverbal clues? Number one, high context culture, low context culture, neutral context culture, multicultural context. The answer is high context culture. High context culture. In international business, what is a key factor for successful negotiation? Key factors for successful negotiation number one standardized strategies cultural sensitivity demand based on pricing centralized decision making the answer is cultural sensitivity international business get it right international business what is the key factor for successful you must understand their culture before you can negotiate with them in nigeria if you want to sell something for 20 naira, you can't call it 20 naira. You will say, ah, it's 15 naira. Because you know they say, ah, ah, let's pay 14 naira. Ah, no, ma. No, ma. Just uh, pay 45 naira. Ah, ah, no. Even when you tell them that you have pay 40 naira, ah, let's pay 30 naira. So you that you want to, so if you put it 20 naira, I'm sure that product you sell it for 1 naira in Nigeria. So their culture, there is a way we, there is a pattern we negotiate. We price something. You can just mal and pick four fruits, put everything together, say, how much you can pay for everything? So that is a culture. You must understand cultural sensitivity when it comes to international communication. Another question, that's number four. What is a major challenge for multinational companies? Motivating local workers, securing raw materials, managing across cultural. So managing across culture is their problem, which is not a common cause of cultural misunderstanding, which is not a common cause of cultural misunderstanding number one stereotyping language differences non-verbal miscues clues i beg your pardon clearly stated expectation the answer is clearly stated expectation which is not a common cause of cultural misunderstanding get it right don't miss it up clearly stated expectation when entering a new culture what should you not do initially ask question make judgment observe carefully avoid assumption the first thing that don't make judgment when people die a young person die here even in, in india when someone died they don't wear black they wear white but you in nigeria it is black we wear we mourn people so you must understand because you can't just get ah, why are they wearing white somebody died and you're feeling like this no you must understand their cultural background and the last one is what communication style is typically used in low context culture? What communication style is typically used in low context culture? In implicit and ambiguous, explicit and precise, highly emotional, confrontational. The answer is explicit and precision. You must what communication style is typical use in low context culture so you must understand the con culture the low context culture read about low context culture or context culture you will understand so when it comes to low context culture you pay attention to you be explicit and precise about that 
so i think at this juncture it's what you should learn basically read about everything about communication types of communication communication process the three theories that i have mentioned onions uh, social extinct theory and the third one you should also read about self-disclosure self-esteem and noise is another thing read about intercultural communication and i'm very sure that if you're able to do this you you are ready for the exam i wish you success in your exam please be patient don't rush and be careful as you use the computer to work some of you is your first time so please be very careful don't just jump to just choose any answer and for the 100 level please differentiate where to put next and to submit when you submit that means you are done all right so be very careful using the computer anything you don't understand ask question once again i love you all and i wish you success in your examination don't forget to subscribe to ibrahim discuss with ibrahim for them oh.